Hello, I'm Pastor Susie Hutchison from Plymouth First United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here with us today. You know, I would have been a more confident person if not for that terrible algebra teacher. I should have never gotten that perm in ninth grade. I could have retired a lot more comfortably if I had worked before starting our family. Would have, should have, could have. I have my list. Do you have yours? Honestly, list is a bit of a misnomer. A list is handy, neat, and tidy. It folds up nicely in your pocket and you only read it when you choose. My regrets and missed opportunities are more like a weighted backpack. I haul them around with me. I unload and repack them periodically just to make sure nothing is missing. I suspect that Jesus' disciple Thomas had some would-haves, should-haves, and could-haves too. Hear this word from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. And Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord, and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in the scroll, but these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I suspect that for some time, Thomas's list read something like this. I should have stayed in that room. I could have seen Jesus. I would have certainly recognized him. The story we read today starts on that first night after the resurrection. What did those Jesus followers do when Mary Magdalene told them that Jesus had risen? Did they celebrate? Did they triumphantly and joyously proclaim it to all the world? Did they march in the streets in another grand parade like Palm Sunday? No. No, they locked themselves into a room out of fear. Can you feel that? Can you feel the desire to hope in the resurrection coupled with this visceral fear that locks you in? We can imagine this group of disciples huddled around listening for sounds of insurrection outside their doors. We can imagine the conversations that transpired between them. Do you think Mary is telling the truth about what's going on? Wouldn't there be chaos outside if that were true? I should have gone to the tomb myself, seen it for myself. What would it mean if she is right? Now imagine them fearfully holed up, drawing up worst case scenarios in their minds and suddenly Jesus is there. Peace 
be with you. Peace be with you, he says, into the midst of all that fear. Then he reveals to them the marks that fear and anger and sin have left on his body. He shows them his pierced hands and his wounded side. And the story says that they were filled with joy. Again, Jesus says, peace be with you. This time spoken into their joy. Peace in fear and peace in joy. Peace be with you. But Thomas, the one they called the twin, wasn't with the other disciples. You have may, may have noticed that this story doesn't tell us where Thomas was. It doesn't tell us if he was out looking for Jesus' missing body. It doesn't tell us if he was an essential worker providing food for those gathered in that locked room. It doesn't tell us if he was tending to the widows and the orphans of the community. It doesn't tell us how long Thomas was gone. A few minutes to go to the bathroom or a few days to cruise the Sea of Galilee. It just says that he wasn't there when Jesus arrived. He didn't see the wounds that the other disciples saw. He didn't hear the words that the others heard. Peace be with you. So when Thomas returns from wherever he was doing whatever he did, the other disciples tell him, we have seen the Lord. This next moment defined Thomas for all the rest of history. Thomas says, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And so with that one response, Thomas becomes doubting Thomas and surely his what if list began. What if he hadn't left? What if he had stayed instead of going out to work or to pick up dinner or to check on his mom? He must have thought, I would have seen it myself. I could have been breathed upon by the resurrected Lord. I should have stayed. Quarantined, sheltered in place, locked down, whatever you call it. It certainly gives us lots of time to think. It gives us lots of time to wonder. Would I be more tolerant of this situation if I had someone on the front line of medical care? Could I survive it if I get it? Should we stay locked in or can we restart commerce? In the midst of all Thomas's questions, God showed up for Thomas. And God shows up for us in the midst of ours. Against all odds, against all reason, even when all hope seems gone, God shows up proclaiming, peace be with you. God does not withhold the divine presence from us because we are filled with fear or doubt. God does not withhold peace from us because we are distracted or because we have wandered away. God always shows up. Now, when I was in youth ministry, it was very common for high school seniors to come to me in full angst. They would be distressed trying to discern what God wanted them to do with their lives after high school. Should I go to Northern Michigan University or Tech or MSU? Should I devote myself to my music? Should I join the military? What does God want me to choose? And we would pray together for wisdom. And inevitably, they would choose wherever their boyfriend or girlfriend was going. They would choose what they had really wanted all along. Now, it took me a few years, but I finally figured out Whatever they chose, wherever they ended up, God was going to show up. God would be in Marquette or Houghton or East Lansing. Maybe God would even show up in Ann Arbor. Because God shows up. 
God shows up in dive bars and practice rooms as surely as God shows up in church choir rooms. God breathes on us as surely in boot camps and and dormitories as they do as he does in sanctuaries. God shows up in hospital rooms, quarantined houses, and funeral homes. God shows up wherever we go, whatever the state of our minds. Maybe you're thinking, oh, Pastor Susie, my pain's bigger than that. My anxiety is rain, raging out of control. Loneliness overwhelms me. Anger fills my head over these restrictions. I have done things I would not utter in church. I'm sorry for your pain. I'm sorry for your shame. I am sorry for your doubt. Peace be with you. God is with the person that you hurt and God is with you. God is with the one whose life is tied to the hum of the ventilator. God is with the one raging with fever. God is with the one whose body is worn down by the virus. And God is with the caretaker who weeps out of fear for their loved one. God is with the essential worker who doesn't want to expose his family but knows they need his paycheck. God is with the child whose parents cannot visit her in the hospital. God is with the people whose personal grief is overshadowed by the scale of this crisis. Jesus shows up and utters, Peace be with you. When Jesus appears to Thomas in that locked upper room, he does not deny the pain of his crucifixion. He does not deny the scars of his death. He shows Thomas his wounds. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. The saving grace of Jesus Christ is as real as your most painful experience. Peace be with you. God does not deny the pain of this world. Not the pain caused by our own doing, nor the pain over which we have had no control. God enters that pain. God enters that suffering. Friends, the pandemic is not too large for God's redemption. The world is not too sick for God's healing. The world is not too broken for God's repairing. We are not too wounded for God's mercy. We are not too terrible for God's forgiveness. The saving grace of Jesus Christ always triumphs. As we sit in this weird time and space, let's set aside what we believe that life would have, should have, or could have been. Instead, let us rejoice in the resurrected Jesus that is with us exactly where we are, who we are, as we are, and how we are. Let's celebrate the persistence of a God who doesn't give up on us. Let's celebrate the God who proclaims peace to those who are sheltering in locked homes, the God who proclaims peace to those who fear because their work puts them at risk, the God who proclaims peace to those who doubt the magnitude of the pandemic. What could be better news than a resurrected Lord who meets us in our most desperate times and proclaims peace be with you. Fear-filled people rejoice. Weary people rejoice. Desperate people rejoice. Rejoice, for Christ has risen indeed. Amen. Pray with me now, please. Dear Lord, we are anxious people. We worry about work and we worry about money. We worry about food and we worry about health. We worry about being loved 
and being loving. You speak into that worry and into that anxiety and you say, peace be with us. So today, oh God, we pray for your peace. We pray for your peace in our situations of being locked in and locked down. We pray for your peace in our hospitals and doctor's offices that are just now beginning to come back from being barraged. We pray for the people who have been working diligently to make our lockdowns possible. And we pray, oh God, for the patients, for the patients uh, who've had the COVID virus and for the patients who have been sick with other things. We pray for the healing of their bodies. Peace be with them. Oh God, we pray for your strength and for the grace of your Holy Spirit to grant us strength that within our inner being we may put away all this useless anxiety and distress. Let us be drawn closer to you rather than closer to these anxieties. We pray, O oh God, for your graciousness and for your mercy. We give thanks. Amen.